everybody. Hi, everybody. So excited. We're so excited. We're going to do a special segment today on, um, this is our early morning Ascension Show. It's Joanna. And I always forget to mention that our links and our, um, our donation on our website is down below. And for those of you that really want to help our channel grow, I never say these things. <laughs> um, please press um, subscribe and like for our videos so that we're allowing our channel to grow in um, our human collective um, awakening as spirit, co-creating as spirit and expanding as um, we're moving into these quasi-physical 5D realms of co-creation, letting go of the vibrational stories, which is what we really like to inspire, empower, and assist all those moving through their own um, multi-dimensional realignment of who we are as sovereign beings of divine eternal experience and we have that opportunity in every moment to harmonize and alchemize all that we are from within all that we um, find within ourselves the vibrational stories and the frictions and the conflict within ourselves and calling that forward to resolve the stories of all timelines that we've been engaged in and when we you know allow ourselves that release and that that alchemy of what we've gone through within and honoring ourselves and honoring our stories and compassion and self-love. Then we allow that adjustment in the frequency codes and our, our coding, if you will, to then vibrate to the all, therefore showing us a different reality story. So it is really about how you're vibrating from within, what are the friction stories? Are you allowing the all of you as spirit to be nourished and to flow in grace and in, and in sacredness? Um, and just allowing spirit to show you the infinite, beautiful array and palette of vibrations that we're able to navigate through. And this is what we've been kind of held within, and we want to kind of shift direction, and we want to intend to focus into this beautiful vortex of what is becoming, and all of the dismantling of experiences that have been limiting and focused on very um, egocentric, um, nominal um, value systems and devaluing systems and belittlement systems that we sometimes don't even see it as that until we start deconstructing it. And one of the systems that we'd like to talk about that we can allow ourselves to completely rewrite in a beautiful and organic way is um, um, the potentiation of how um, the children and the youth are now entering into the grown-up world, if you will, and the, the various stages of development that we all go through. And allowing each and every moment of our existence and our empowerment as leaders, as sovereign beings, as the directors of these beautiful new experiences, so that we're now inspiring these new platforms for all those to step on in the most dynamic and beautiful way that they're able to and really co-create that excitement and that knowingness that they're creating their own platform of life and, and exploration and discovery, creating that experience from within, exploring that experience from within and then expressing it equally without inhibition of who they are as spirit, without who, who they are and how they want to express themselves and to be changing in expression. And that's what that you know pocket of growth and development really is for youth um, in the early and late teenage years. And we're, we're looking at it from their perspective and how can we see it from the highest perspective on um, all of these children that are, that are coming up in the experiential cycles of ascension and entering into 5D. These children are so dynamically um, equipped to see and create from, from a much wider and higher perspective of, of, of potentiation. And so how can we begin in really inspiring this new breath, this new life, this new experience of love and, and vibrancy and illumination and radiance into potentiation that is humanity for the children? How can the children understand that they are truly infinite creators from within and above and below and all systems within our galaxy? They've come here as divine encoded beings to really expand into the expansiveness of who they are as galactic cosmic beings for the evolution of the all within the galaxy. And just as we have come with soul blueprint, so too have our children. And our children really rely on us to provide those experiences of, um, to provide those experiences of manifestation for us to, um, just moving my screens around here, so I can see what's, I was doing a webinar yesterday and we were using some of these beautiful experiences to just to show the movement of energy of how our vibration and our core belief systems and our perspectives can change the, um, can change the acceptance of, um, of our children and those in our circle. Because if we're in lack of acceptance of who we are, we're not following our path, if we're not if we're suppressing anything within who we are, they feel these suppressions and see it and feel it in the auras and it becomes prevalent in the speech and how we talk about ourselves and how we limit ourselves. We all know that if we're feeling good and fluid and powerful from within, we end up radiating that to the fields and to the potentiation of what the children have access to because their auras and their fields of magnetics are directly 
um, creating with the, with the magnetics that you're inspired within and you're creating for your, from yourself and for yourself. And so you radiate this expression of love and light and potentiation. Oftentimes when we're parents, we spend so much of our time worrying about our children, we end up creating those timelines of worry because we're projecting to them about the worries that we see of them as opposed to aligning in the direct alignment of who we are as pure radiation of masterful ship that these children have masters and guides and teams with them. And instead of projecting the positive potentiation and the highest potentiation, we end up just repeating the cycles from our lineage, from the stories that we've come from and how as parents, we've been told to um, maintain control and direction and guidance and all of these things that we thought we were meant to do to kind of align our children into the same directions of limitation that we've come from and that our society just shows to us. But now as 5D, we're operating from a different experience. We're operating from a higher vibrational experience that's aligned with 5D, with the grids of potentiation, which are infinite. These children have DNA, which is far beyond the DNA constructs that we've been brought in, which means that there's activations that there are infinitely potentiations to create for themselves. So in the alignment of the 5D, instead of projecting those timelines of worry, because those timelines of worry come from the exact soul stories that you're meant to transcend and see them as the highest, most divine aspects of infinite beings of mastership. They come from all different planets. They come from all different bodies. They come from all different exploration potentiations. And how can the perspectives that we hold about ourselves, what we exist within and what exists within us, to also see this within others so that we are not projecting ill or worry or, you know, what if, what if, what if, and just creating those, those cycles of timelines. But you're actually standing in your unique sovereignty. You're co-creating your self-direction and your self-empowerment. And you're presenting the most empowered, inspired, and encouraging perspective that you are a master. You know what you're doing. You are a master. You have the insights within you. You are a master. Go within and what do you feel? Go within and see what your teams are guiding you. Go within and see how spirit is guiding you. Go within to see how your, your existence of your souls and lineage is calling you forward to explore and to expand. Because these children have a multidimensional perspective and creativity that is not yet tapped into, not even. <laughs> Throughout their whole life, they're constantly going to be exploring more navigations of their multidimensional DNA. And so how are we projecting and holding ourselves in our highest and our best so that we're offering that highest potentiation of, of radiant and illumination that is in guidance and, and certainty and confidence and empowerment and love, unconditional love for who these children are so that they stand within their highest and their best. Children, before a word is even said, and this is why truth is so empowering. When you're, when you're in full illuminated truth, your aura shines because your truth is based on your chakras. Your truth is the color of your chakras. And there's no, as you're clearing out the densities, you're cre creating and harmonizing that higher vibrational truth, which therefore illuminates your chakras and your bodies and your magnetic field as well as your aura. So the more in alignment of truth that you are, constantly clearing out the aura, constantly clearing out your chakras, because you're aligning as spirit, you're harmonizing as spirit, you radiate that pure radiance of illumination. I know who I am. I'm directed by spirit. This is my path. This is what I'm here to create. And let's create. And so as you're standing in that self-empowerment of who you are as spirit, you're being directed and guided by your highest intelligence, which is the councils and your teams and your higher self and your soul, not, not kind of giving your power away to outside systems that have no idea who you are at a spiritual level. They have no idea who you are as the infinite blessedness of a creator because we are spirit more than we are matter. Remember, our bodies would not survive and could not survive without our spirit. And so we nourish ourselves and start as this quasi-physical 5D experience. We're now creating ourselves and our, all of our reality as spirit. And the more that we harmonize ourselves as spirit, think as spirit, speak as spirit, walk as spirit, commune as spirit, we're now creating that 5D experience that is aligned with spirit. And we're allowing those stories of physicality of all limitations and, you know, kind of separation and depression and suppression of our creative exploration of who we are as spirit because the spirit needs to flow and be expressive that is the healing of the whole entire multi-dimensional bodies and as we harmonize and grow in that our creative expression will change and flow and so the children are looking to us for well how how are you operating in your life and are you my highest example to live in your highest truth so that i can live in my highest truth so that when i'm approaching this world and i'm ready to step out on it as an independent sovereign being do i have the gifts and the skills and the talents and the wisdoms within me to move about this co-creative experience within a 5D perspective. Well, these children are so highly advanced that they're going to be 
probably more so as soon as they get out into the world, they're going to be creating those experiences for themselves because they're not held within the subjugations or the delineations within the home that say less than or different stories that they've been taught and brought into as these boxes and definitions that are not yet worked through. And that's okay because every child contracts with you for exactly what you need to teach them and what they need to teach you. But to stand in your power and radiate and illuminate, wow, you're incredible. You have guides with you. Let's sit down and let's talk. Let's commune. And how can you see yourself as the highest and best? How can you see that you do have the answers before you ask the questions? How can you see that you are meant to explore this world in unique and different ways and to see yourself in that way too? And to absolutely express yourself in the highest and most high so that you know that you are absolutely without question, without without worry or without um, you know, without apology, you get to express who you are and your desires for exploration and your desires for communication in a higher vibrational manner so that you are respected in all ways. Your body, your mind, your, your heart and your soul are all respected. And you get to express that expression. You get to express your expression in the way that is unique to you and you get to allow yourself the confidence that your human rights and your spiritual rights and all that you are as a multidimensional being will be honored and valued and to never ever suppress or you know place in subjugation in any way any life you know ever be controlled by another um, because that is the number one law of free will to allow all beings their unique right to move freely within their path and to not be hindered by any other um, so that they're not going to carry karma they're not going to carry the 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 experiences that we've created through control and through greed and all the various things that we're, we're now clearing away as 3d so we're allowing this fully creative experience of self-sovereignty, self-love, self-illumination, self-direction, and we're returning that power back to the children. We're returning their sense of self back to them. And we're reminding them that they are a spirit. How do you feel about this? What is your intuition showing you? And also too, those are the great experiences that the team showed me a long time ago is what do the, what do the children and what do the youth want to see of their future and see of their earth? There should be a lot greater um, you know, discussion and really great excitement and really great celebration on how we can come together as a collective and really create these beautiful collective communities of light and really start talking and negotiating and compromising and really creating in this most divine, sacred geometric way, the ideas and the inspirations that will come about of changing um, how we move about this experience and not be so limited in what was and just keep regurgitating what was and just changing it slightly over time. Why don't we just change it all and flip it upside down and say, well, children, what do you want to see and how the needs and your gifts and skills, what is it that you really need? Because their multidimensional needs are not what ours were. So why would they be learning the same things we did 40 years ago? They're much different beings than we are. And so they were showing me, the teams were just showing me, how can we change and look at the systems through which they move in and out of so that they are fully prepared for this 5D earth and they can prepare it for themselves. That's really sovereignty. That's really putting the power back into where it should be because they know higher and best for what their unique gifts and skills are all solely when you're on a um, higher vibrational planet. Their exploration and their, um, their highest level of um, soulful fulfillment and peaceful fulfillment comes from that creative exploration and the sovereignty to be so and do so in quite freedom and liberation. How are they expressing and exploring themselves in the discovery of who they are in all life? Because it's source creator, it's God, it's spirit. They are taught this from the earliest of ages. Everything in creation, everything, even things unseen and unseen, seen, not seen, things that we think are alive or not live, all things and everything in between the spirit and source. And how can we begin that exploration that we are as of it as well? And that is the earliest so that we are never told that we are separate or less than or boxed in any definition that holds us in devaluing systems. So what the teams had said was, um, as the youth today, can we see ourselves in their shoes? And, and they're holding such a profound experience. I mean, these, these, these children are so profound. These children are so profoundly dynamic. They're just about to enter this 5D realm and they're, they're, they see the world outside of them changing. And this is where we have to really awaken up these various collectives that are in our global human collective. All of these collectives have their own unique perspective of how they can add value within themselves and see that value within their world changing as a beautiful, dynamic, benevolent experience, as a beautiful, dynamic unity and oneness experience, bringing oneness and unity from various fractions of our um, vibrational society and holding it together and seeming and weaving it together as one, regardless of how different it may seem because they too are seeing that of themselves in the world. They know within themselves, as we all do, as we all do as rainbow children coming forward, the confusion that we see in our world as to why would, why would they do that this way when it's so easy if we just do it this way. 
and all of the constructs that we've seen and restrictions we've seen ourselves in to do it in different ways and honoring ways that honor the value of spirit within and how we express ourselves with that. Because if we're not doing and following and living ourselves as creative beings of light, why would we do anything? Because life is about creation. That's the whole word, creation. Creativity, the creative energy of who we are, spirit. That's evolution. We must evolve. We must change. So to do that, we must create and express and explore ourselves in the rediscovery of who we are always. That's just the evolutionary process and why we have cycles. If we're not changing in our cycles, then we're de-evolving or we're stagnant. And that's when the body becomes ill. Um, because again, if the spirit is not being evolved and nourished and, and, and valued and honored in its, in, in its environment, then that energy becomes ill. And we all know that because there's been various tests of various aspects of life that are put in negative, dysfunctional, limiting environments and energies that have been placed in positive and loving environments. And are they given that freedom and liberation to be their fullest self, whether it's a plant or an animal or a human? Everything within that experience is spirit, is source. So are we nourishing in that way? Does it know itself as spirit? Most often than not, because as soon as we are born, we are brought into these stories of limitation based on society, lineage, akash, dogma, whatever those systems and stories are, which is great. But now we can break those stories out and say, how about we take this, this, and this, and now I can start rebuilding who I am. And now I can be the infinite of who I am because I know I'm spirit. And I can take the best of everything, honor all stories, but now this. So I always start at infinite. I create the infinite because I am spirit creating matter. I am spirit putting all that spirit spirit together to make matter matter. So here's what they channeled. Um, always again ask the youth for what do they want to see of their world? How can they be a part of the construction of their new 5D? How can they create a system of learning of oneness, the learning of oneness that themselves within themselves is in all things as all things, so that they really get into and expand because they already know and are already coded as their DNA and who they are as multidimensional beings. They already know this, except the platforms and the experiences that we've we've put them through, if you will, <laughs> you know. Like, these, like, the, like the experiences of just moving through these mazes have nothing to do with who they are as divine creative beings. And not only that, but they're even given systems of restriction and valuing the value systems through their grading and through their, you know, kind of demoralizing separation through grading and through, you know, why, why would we need grading? And how can we look at that to be more um, exemplary of who they are as spirits? How could you ever grade and, and kind of judge one another against one another so we're really releasing these systems of competition and value because it has nothing to do with who you are a spirit it doesn't <laughs> one could never compare two people because those two people have completely different soul blueprints they come with completely different that one soul has an infinite number of lifetimes and soul experiences and soul forms and bodies and experiences that they are here in this lifetime to experience and explore and transcend completely different from this person. You could never ever compare the two, you couldn't. And so why would we, why would we, oh, why would we even grade them in it? <laughs> to say that you're, you know, you're in the median, you're in the higher medium. And so we're releasing those experiences because they are in, an, in, in essence devaluing of the sense of self. So when you're in love with who you are and you're allowing that divine creative exploration, you're knowing of who you are and you're allowing yourself just to simply explore. And I know that, you know, for our children, it's been such a, you know, it's been a topic of contention because they knew at a very early age that they had a different system of value within who they were. And they found it, very, they found it so stressful, you know, that they were constantly judged and constantly in class feeling as if they were, you know, criticized and ostracized because their answers may have been different than others or their expression of themselves may have been different than others. And although those were not absolutely, of course, the glorious teachers and all the systems that we come from, we're all teachers ourselves. And we, we, all, we absolutely understand that the intentions are never, not, never that. It's always to have the most loving and safe environments for development, you know? But how can we operate in a different way so that every child has their creative exploration first and foremost and releasing all of the, of the outlines and restrictions and limitations that they function within and get them out of the box? So that there is never any fear about their creative uniqueness and their expression within it. It doesn't matter if their every day should be the experience of the art class, if you will. And just exploring themselves as the, the blank canvas. Themselves within the world in and of itself. Because their gifts will automatically activate. And whatever wisdoms they've come with, they will then say, wow, I'm interested in taking this class. And they will have that class online or in a building or something where they could go and they could just do that, that beautiful experience of that class where they want to get that extra information. Or that now moment of experience. But they will activate whatever wisdoms are come with. 
each soul soul blueprint comes just like we do if you have a <clears throat> If you have a keen interest for physics, you're going to direct yourself in those arenas and that'll just be activated. So we don't have to worry about directing the children into whatever careers or experiences that we want based on, you know, past lifetimes and past social, social programs because they're breaking away now. So here's what they were showing me is that um, the disposition and disposition means how we feel about ourselves. So, so the disposition is how we feel about um, our, our tendencies and, and the spirit of who we are. The spirit of who we are how do we feel that what is the disposition of who i know i am so again knowing thyself seeking thyself who am i what do i exist within what is this really that's the disposition so the disposition of who they are as a who as opposed to their highest and their their best is never about quantifying or objectifying through grading systems or promises of directing any other within their experience there is no inner alignment of the higher knowing of the self, creation, or the creative potentials in any aspect of life in any moment of life. There's such limitation. And we've put systems of grading, we've put systems of really devaluing because you could never ever grade someone's creative experience. How could you? You know, it's just like we always say, you know, we always say of, you know, Jesus and Buddha, how could you grade them? Why would you, <laughs> right? And so why would we do this to the children? they're all masters we would never ever want to grade them and say you're better than to have a competition <laughs> why would we do that right we would hold them all as precious right that's what we do with our children we would never provide our children with a better than or less than favorites you know we wouldn't and <laughs> they're all precious every single one of them they're precious and their path is precious so how can we start recreating these experiences that are that are you know the inner value the inner value not being in disposition of of an outside um structure saying this is how you're going to fit and how do you feel about it <laughs> right and so we can take great value from these experiences that we've come from and really say wow how can we make this how can we make this really intrinsically um creatively exploratory that's really who we are as spirit and all of creation within it and really go from within and out go from within and out um, and not necessarily just following the book and creating the memorization and the experience of tradition that may not have anything to do with their creative exploration. I mean, how many of us as parents have asked our children, what part of your experience of historical learning is going to have that much of a bearing on what, what you're actually doing in your life and who you are as a creative being and how you want to explore yourself within the world? And is, that val is, it, is it valid? So we were looking at how we are preparing in the 5D in, in completely different ways. And it's all valued. It's all valued. There's no judgment on any of it. But what we're saying now is that we're coming into the awareness very quickly. <laughs> we're coming into the awareness very quickly. It's, it's all over the world. There's big stuff happening. So we understand that things are breaking apart. We're understanding the ideas about conformity and control and fear-based programs. And so we're understanding what served us, what hasn't served us. And it's all been really great because we've all, we've all bought and paid into the systems. We've all, we've all done it. So now we're saying, okay, well, who am I now? What story can I create now? And how can we really start creating this beautiful experience for all the children and get them involved? Because this is their planet. This is their, theirs, this is their playground, right? They shouldn't be excluded in any part of it. There will be those future leaders. So how can we get them involved? And how can we rewrite it so that it's from the intrinsic um, spiritual creative experience as opposed to um, obligatory systems that really have little relevance to who they are as spirit and the creative force of creation? Their DNA is not like ours. You know, I was born a crystal and a rainbow, and I was born an empath and a psychic. And so my DNA right now is not what theirs are. <laughs> you know, so we have to allow that. And I'm pretty out there, you know, as far as what I'm able to tap into at a psychic and empathic level and what I can download from the higher councils and what I can download from Gaia, what I can download from the biosphere, what I can download from the planet, what I can download from any aspect of life. Because that's that psychic connection with, with God. All things in between is God. When you have that God space open in your psychic abilities, God is everywhere. That's how come you can download it. That's how come you can talk with it. Put yourself inside a flower. It's God. Spirit. Creator. It has nothing to do with the religions. It's a part of it, yes. And they're all very beautiful and wonderful. But how you align yourself as spirit, walk as spirit, harmonize as spirit, speak as spirit, seek as spirit, know yourself as spirit, and all things otherwise as spirit, Travel from interdimensions as spirit, it's all spirit. You'll know how to dematerialize. You'll know how to take yourself from planet A to planet B. You'll know that. 
because it's all about consciousness. It's all about who you are as conscious. Conscious matter, spirit. The spirit allows you to dematerialize and materialize again. The spirit is the one that negotiates with your body. So how can we start allowing ourselves to be that whole spirit to start saying, wow, okay, if I'm spirit first, what is my highest desire of excitement that I can explore in the world? How can I really start entraining myself and start seeking those informations and those classes and those wisdoms so that I'm just going to start aligning my life as a self-directed being of light? And I don't have to go through any structure or school. I can actually say, what classes can I take and how can I move about that way? So those schools and the learning will be self-directed not necessarily plucked in a program that they don't have any access to with excitement. <laughs> they're only going to take on how much of a percentage if they're not creatively excited about it. And we all know that. I've been there. <laughs> or you had to sit in class and take it, and you're just like, I absolutely received like 5% of that class. <laughs> you know, let it be self-directed. Let it be self-excited um, self, um, and, and discovery of who they are as spirit and all things. I mean, there's so many beautiful, incredible online learning platforms now with really great teachers. And so those children can, can move about the world and take whatever classes they want and have the world as its exploration and as its journey of school and learning and the higher laws of one, the higher laws of the universe to harmonize their multidimensional bodies. Because again, part of my role in the Pleiades was to assist all children that were born into the planet and um, reintegrate them into their male and female perspectives of their bodies and um, allow them the harmonization of who they are, remembering their bodies of the alignment of the male and the female, allowing them to understand their DNA and all things as creator and God, so that when they're traveling on and off planet, they absolutely respect the laws of the creator. They absolutely understand who they are, because to travel in and off planet, you must honor and have that male and female balance so that you're in harmony with who you are. There is no friction. There's no conflict stories. If there's conflict stories within, you're going to create conflict stories without. And therefore, when you travel about the galaxy, those conflicts will create greater conflict. So it's really important to have that inner peace and that inner balance of one. As the inner balance of one is, which all adults now are going through, is the ascension process to clear out the densities of the imbalance of male and female. We each have to move through those rebalancing. And that's why those conflict stories exist. So now we're coming into our awakened state. Say, well, how have we taught the children any of this? So that's those, those great, those great um, starting points, right? Return to the center of who we are and really start co-creating in that quasi 5D way so that these children can go and run with it. Um, and so the disposition is the prevailing tendencies of one's spirits and one knowings of oneself and one's excitement of oneself and how it sees itself within the world and is there really happiness and joy factor there and where's that balance factor? And so how can we um, create a system where they absolutely know from within who am I? And how do I, how do I know my value and my treatment of myself and when I'm moving about the world, not to have any outside factor judge or grade me because I'm absolutely per perfect within who I am and I'm going to gain the access of education and and movement and learning from those in the environment and from those that I call in. That soul spirit calls in exactly what they need. When your children are in there, this is us as, as I mean, I've had so many communications with my guides and my teams. Your children all have teams and all have guides. They've come with a soul blueprint on what they want to explore, what they need to explore so that they can go about and do their path in however they want to travel multidimensionally. They're constantly working and being healed and harmonized in their highest and their best. It's up to us as adults and as ambassadors of the planet to prepare the fields for them, to clear out the densities, to break away limiting systems, to call in the highest potentiation for them, to create perhaps the gaming industry and open it up by bathing it and sending the highest light potentiation so that those that are creating those games are creating games that are most of the highest functioning games and have nothing to do about violence and destruction and killing one another. We're actually offering them the highest potentiation template, which is far beyond our, our multidimensional understanding of what a game might be and just go, for, go way beyond. And those are the potentiations that we can change and put the positive experiences because everything is, everything is innately neutral. Everything is innately neutral. And so how we, how we, again, how are we believing and intending those experiences is what those experiences will have those energies within it, as just as our virus. The ideas that we had about one another in the collective work the creations of viruses and illnesses and the distancing of one another and why we have to stop and think, okay, well, are we really giving our power away? Or can we, can we live in oneness? Can we live in the greatest, highest health for ourselves? So the collective manifestations are the singular manifestations that are just being seen at a collective level so that we can stop and we can realign so that we can, um, you know, we can chart a different course that is positive, that is aligned, that is enlightening, that is, um, 
self-actualizing for the spirit of who we are and honoring all beings and all bodies and all voices and all exploratory you know, missions and paths. Um, and so that alignment of, well, how do we see all of the systems in our experience and, and just allow it to be all neutral? And that takes mastery because we all have been brought up with these stories of belief systems through the wounding. And then we have judgments and then we put more separation in it because of those judgments. So protest nothing, judge nothing. It's all neutral. It allows you that moment of now to say, wow, everything is pretty much perfect and masterful because it's all spirit. It's allowing us to see the highest vibration of where we can infuse light, oneness, and togetherness and really start creating the thread of oneness, no matter how different things can seem. We are the ones that are threading those vibrations into higher vibrational potentials. And it means that we've got to deconstruct and then say, yes, how can we carry the highest light forward? How can we see the gaming industry as a totally different industry that absolutely serves the collective in the most highest potential ways? Start feeling into those vibrations of the collective energy because we are, again, spirit to matter matter. So the spirit matter are the thought forms and the energies and the pulsations, and then it becomes matter matter because we get those ideas that, yeah, I can create that, I can create that, I can create that, like little particles of energy that then get to be put into matter matter because that's the creative process. Opening up the creative process, wow, that spirit spirit, we call it spirit matter, is now becoming matter matter. Because you're now aligned with spirit, you're working in your highest and your best, that pineal is all open, your, your chakras are all aligned, you're moving with that highest oscillation and light, you're a balance of your heart, male and female bodies. Wow, I got it, let's do this spirit, let's do that spirit, and your teams and you've got full access. And your, your children have full access to their soul's blueprint and what they've come to experience and explore. And they will call in what they need for their exploration. And so the, more, the worry and the concern that we think that the path they should be taking or what they should be getting into, just continue to empower them as the highest loving being and see them as divine. As they said to me, in our, we had our, our community of light meeting last night, see all beings before you as divine order. They are divine children of spirit. See them as that. See them as perfect divine order of spirit. Empower them to know that they are perfect as they are because the children will sense any question and any doubt and any lack that you see in them are as the projections of yourself. And then you're projecting that onto them. So they sense and feel it before you even say a word because they're telepathic and psychic. They can sense, they can sense truth a mile away. <laughs> That's why they feel so uncomfortable around most adults because they know most adults live in systems and programs that are not truthful. And so just understand that we are living as vibrational beings now, and it's up to each person to clear out those systems of lack of truth, of separation or suppression, and start clearing so that the value system of the spirit is now amplified by the value of the self and directed by the self. And then you live in that higher vibrational speaking of truth, being of truth, vibrating as truth, illuminating as truth, and radiating as truth. And then you align with the grids through which all systems are brought from that spirit, spirit to matter, matter. Because you're now vibrating in a way that is of the greater good, of the greater good of all. And you see all before you as divine. For they are. Why would anybody judge them any less? All beings before you are divine order. It's divine spirit. And the highest and the best and be the kindest leader and the wisest leader through kindness and generosity of that. Knowing and seeing the best and the highest in all. For we have no idea the portals that they walk through in their ascension, the portals that they walk through in the knowing of thine self, in the clearing of thine self, and they call in their own codes and walk through their own portals that create a whole new template that we don't even have any idea about. And yet we've been limiting them within systems that devalue them and grade them against traditional systems that simply don't work and operate as the divine. They're not aligned with that 5D experience. And nothing yet is because we're just shifting, right? So again, there's no judgment. Um, so abstract exploration is inherent in all higher vibrational realms. This is so as the discovery of God in all things and allows for the self of the pursuing of it and equal of its equal discovery. So that's a multidimensional Christed offering right there. So the abstract exploration so there's no defined box checking A to B and C to D and all of that linear. It's not linear. Abstract exploration is inherent in all higher vibrational realms. This is the discovery of the God essence and the source essence in all aspects of life. And it allows for the self of the exploration of its pursuing. I pursue, I seek, I discover, I explore. I, I, I allow myself to be expansive in my exploration allows it its own equal discovery and knowing of it as it see what we're saying as you explore a flower you discover parts of yourself within it because it's all source that is the connection of oneness and we all know this through the higher consciousness studies um, inhibitions of the creator source spirit of life so 
we, um, how are we able to release those inhibitions to spirit exploration? As again, exploring a forest. There's an infinite number of life potentiations just within the floor of the, so of the, floor of the forest. And the children get that. The children can look on a rock and just sit there in, in amazement and awe. How can we continue this through all life? And then start speaking and communing because within the biosphere alone, the biosphere is our most richest template of life upon this beautiful, incredible planet. And yet we've been completely tuned off and not even communicating with this, of this potentiation of, of communication and intelligence and healing capabilities and wisdom and love and recalibration of who we are as multidimensional beings of light. We are spirit matter, spirit matter is Gaia. We are made up of Gaia elements. We are the physics and the chemistry of Gaia. We are biophysical beings that is Gaia, that is spirit. We are the one with Gaia. And why those of us that have that potential to be those conduits of spirit of God, we can communicate with forests. We communicate with Gaia because those are living beings of consciousness within the biosphere at every level. Elementals, fairies, the gnomes that are held within the elemental range that are the Elohim creator gods that create all life and how a life is all balanced on our planet and why spirit and God and Gaia know in an instant when something is out of balance and where do we need help? Where can we put help? Where can we rebalance this? It's all about the, the law of balance in our universe. And Gaia has been incredibly imbalanced because we have been disconnected. We have intelligence and, and divine, infinite creatorhood and communication abilities to not only heal thyself and put our creative intelligence and exploration into this greater oneness of ecosystems, but to heal ourselves simultaneously in being so and doing so. The biosphere is so incredibly rich for divine wisdoms, oneness, and co-creatorhood, and bringing our balance systems into a higher state of lushness and richness in the amplification of love and understanding that that biosphere is an experience of God creator and it can not be, it's life. <laughs> it's how we understand ourselves as life. It's our experience as life and we're connected and threaded with it. And so those of us that commune with spirit consciousness and God consciousness through Gaia, the rock consciousness, the water consciousness, everything that is consciousness, forests, the forests speak. The vibration held in one tree is the life of the energy of that one tree and it speaks to all other trees. It knows exactly where it is. And if that tree was to fall, it knows exactly where and why it falls. And all other trees know that as well. So it's a, it's a divine communication process that, that we have never been taught exists, but it absolutely does. It's an intelligent life system within life systems and the biosphere is the most lush and experiential experience for us to recommune, gather and ground and anchor and heal ourselves within it. And it should be one of the first aspects of life that we commune with all children. <laughs> you know, that's how they reawaken themselves and become that inhibition with spirit and that discovery of spirit. So this is what they were saying. The inhibitions of the creator source spirit of all life and the life within thyself as such all is the elemental anchoring and the knowing and the rediscovery of thyself becoming. So you're always constantly becoming as you discover and explore yourself within it, as they just said earlier. This allows for the self of the pursuing of itself equally in it. So you are equally in whatever it is that you are discovering because it is showing you that I am now acknowledging you as spirit. I am seeing you as spirit because remember, one of the first laws of physics, as you perceive something and put your attention and focus on it, it becomes itself. So you are, that is that God energy essence. It's just explained in different ways. But the essence, because the science is not really understanding that God is all things. God knows exactly what's, got, what's going on on this planet and every balanced, imbalanced system within it. And how can we awaken the spirit of who we are as humans saying, yeah, let's get busy, let's create. Let's create some magic here. We got this. We are spirit now awakening to all things that are spirit. And how can we realign our systems that are absolutely all aligned with spirit, all aligned with the evolutionary programs of light and infinite eternal experience? And so... <clears throat> How may we satisfy the creative inhibitions of creational source? Remember, creational source is all things that are source in evolution because it's creational, constantly evolving, constantly in cycles, constantly in evolution. You know, just as your families, the, your, 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 your siblings, your sisters, your brothers, your children all have teams of guides. They have a sacred trinity of guides. They're in a sacred trinity holding you and the soul family of the sacred trinity. They're each experiencing different vibrational earths, just as you are. You're radiating the highest potentiation of who they are as perfect God children. They can align with their highest and their best, and they have access to the constant evolution that is God. And it's all quantum. 
It's not for any one person to say, no, you've got to be on this earth. You've got to be in my program. You've got to be on my lineage. You've got to be in my, my timeline. It's not for anybody to say that about anybody on anyone because it, tell me, <laughs> it takes everything and, and the most exciting and you wouldn't want to do anything else because you are so rich within thyself. Heal thyself, know thyself, and your timeline is perfect. That's, that's a, again, nothing can be in comparison to any other. It's impossible. It cannot be. Even if they were, you know, even if they were twins, it can, you just can't. You cannot. You cannot compare one with the other. You couldn't. Source would never create that, <laughs> right? It's the assimilation of all that is creative life, creative, creative beauty of all things that are natural, unique, and innate, because that's the evolution of, of who we are. And how beautiful is that? That's what we're meant to be. We're meant to, we're meant to divinely um, allow ourselves the perfection of our uniqueness, the perfection of our exploring, exploring and our um, creatorhood. Right? We're constantly harmonizing into new threads of vibrational dimension and celebrate every moment of it. Celebrate those moments where you think, wow, I just had a download about I could do this, I could mention this, I can talk about that. And start creating those now beginnings, that vortex of now change, that vortex of now, that vortex of now, that vortex of now. That quasi-physical spirit matter that is there for you to create matter matter. That's why you get those downloads. That's why you get those inspirations. That's why you get those ideas. Because you're ready to bring that spirit matter into matter matter. And you will be doing so by integrating and threading oneness, unity, compassion, and allowing your community to rebuild with you and rebuild that 5D experience where all voices are heard and the children have their absolute exploration and experience within it and rediscovery of, them, of themselves within it, as they said. So abstract exploration is inherent in all vibration, higher vibrational realms. <clears throat> and this is the discovery of thyself as source and allows for the self that is pursuing it, its equal discovery and measure of it. So again, spirit always provides an equal measure, but are we discovering it? Are we seeking it? Are we allowing ourselves to know these children are masters? They come with teams, they come with beings, and how can we project their perfection as opposed to project worry and fear and doubt, you know, and a system of grading that doesn't, 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 has nothing to do with who they are. And so how can we change that? How can we inspire it? How can we create something really great? It's all beautiful and it's all great, but now it's time to step into something that's brand new that absolutely serves their sense of self. So they don't walk around feeling broken. They don't walk around feeling less than. They don't walk around feeling as if their voices don't matter or their creative experience or expression or exploration doesn't matter, but absolutely does. It's meant to be unique. It's meant to be profound. We're meant to break out of the box every moment, every moment, every moment and serve as the spirit. And that's, my friend, how we create that incredible um, appreciation, that appreciation for all that is spirit, all that is spirit, all that is spirit. And, and we've come out of these conformed systems and let's celebrate it. Yes, it was such a great ride. It was such a great, it served us so much. And release all protest, release all separation, release all judgment, release all finger pointing, release it all and just create that vortex of love and oneness and how can we thread in something really beautiful and, and brand new because all are needed all are source all are dynamic explorations of spirit and how can the children step up and start becoming that discovering thyself as that and we're so grateful dear lady ones so for those that so desire our links are below um please help subscribe to our channel and um for any comments down below and press the like button um <laughs> people say it i guess that matters <laughs> Um, I know that I know I'm feeling the love and the vibrations from all of you and we love you so much. Um, our donation links are below and um, for helping us um, continue our beautiful multidimensional systems. We do have a class this Saturday, a mastery class, and we're going to talk about the expansive um, potentiation of ascension, awakening, communication, multidimensional communication as we're entering into the quasi-physical um, 5D gates, if you will, and how to feel into the, what that is and what it means and how it means and the incredible biosphere and how that is the um, beautiful enhancement and the enrichment of who we are within our planet as our planet and uploading our new gifts and our talents because they do activate all that we are. We're here to be in communion and leadership and oneness with Gaia. And we're so very grateful for all the beings that are with us on this ride. And we love you so very much. So we wish you a great day, dear lighted ones. We love you so much and go out and explore and be your highest self and um, allow yourself to know that in your center and in your discovery of the most loving being that you are a spirit, spirit loves you. Spirit's always um, beautiful and honoring and cradling you in all moments and send out those radiations and those love and those illuminations that all before you are divine, all before you are children of God, all before you are perfect and they have their own unique path 
So empower them, encourage them, and inspire them as spirit. They absolutely are masters standing before you. So make no one feel less, make no one feel not meaningful, make no one feel not, not valued because all are children of spirit and they all deserve their free will and their human rights and their cosmic rights and their universal rights for their highest expression of the divine spirit within. So thank you, dear lighted ones. We love you so much.